Good morning. <laughs> right, what happened everyone this morning? <laughs> it's so good, so good to um, see very um, familiar faces and new faces. I'm so honored to be here this morning to share with you. Thank you all for the invita invitation, you know, to share this morning. Um, you know, once a mingo, always a mingo. And I really, really love and appreciate this school, the leadership. I honor the leadership of the University of the Bahamas and University of Bahamas North and to everyone here. Thank you, Mistress Lewis, for the kind invitation to share this morning. So I just want to share um, on seeking God and finding purpose during times of crisis. Um, you know, we're presented with two um, choices today. In all that we go through, in all that we are facing, are we going to grow through it or are we going to die in it? Are we going to allow the problems we encounter help cultivate our purpose or will we allow the problems to squeeze the life out of us? Trials are inevitable. So don't just go through it, grow through it. Use every challenge and every situation and every crisis as fertilizer for purpose in which God has placed on the inside of you. Because can I tell you that nothing catches God by surprise. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows that this coronavirus would have happened in the year 2020 while we was praising God and watch night service. God was like, yeah, I got this coronavirus waiting on y'all. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he knows the end from the beginning. He holds the world in his hands. As Psalm 24 verse 1 says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So nothing God allows just happens, you know? There is always a purpose in everything that he does. It is up to us to allow God to teach us and groom us through the crisis. God, what are you trying to teach me in this? You know, okay, like this situation clearly, you know, it's already happening. I can't change it. So what are you teaching me in it? You know, I'm just going to go through this with a purpose. I'm not just going to, you know, just go through it just for going through it. Say, I'm going to get something out of this situation. Because crisis can be an opportunity for growth if you allow it to be. We see in Luke chapter 5 verses 1 to 6 where um, Peter and another disciple were having a bit of a crisis. They were toiling all night. They were, you know, trying to fish. You know, they're fishers of men. I mean, fishermen. So they were toiling and, you know, going in that water. And they found no fish that whole time. Then Jesus comes by and they, he was like, why don't you launch out into the deep? You know, go a bit further. And, you know, Peter's like, but Jesus, we know what we're doing. We fishermen. You just come from preaching and you're trying to tell us, you know, what to do. But anyways, instead of, you know, just ignoring the um, Jesus command, the disciples decided to obey God. And as a result of their obedience and as a result of them trying to find purpose, even in the midst of their crisis, because if they didn't have no fish, how they were going to sell for tomorrow? If they didn't have no fish, how are they going to make money? So instead of them, you know, just giving up or, you know, just le um, leaving that situation as it was, they used it as an opportunity to grow. And through their obedience, they were able to, you know, receive the harvest that they were toiling all night um, for. So that really, you know, shows us that even in the midst of a crisis, we can still be obedient to what God is telling us to do. You know, we don't have to get angry. We don't have to get in our feelings. But God still has something he wants to get to us. And if we allow ourselves to be obedient, we will receive that very thing. God gave us loads of free time during this pandemic. You know, hearing from, you know, older people because I'm still young. You know, they were like, this thing has never happened before where they were locked down for so long. So God gave us a lot of free time during this pandemic. So how were we stewards of this time? Did we allow it to waste? Or have we come out of it with something of substance? What are we coming out of this pandemic with? What creative idea have we thought of? What new book have we read or wrote? What have we done with the time that we had that our future self will thank us for? What have we done with the time that we had that our future self will thank us for? During this um, whole pandemic, um, I restarted my blog, rocoglobal.blog. I started my YouTube channel, um, you know, just releasing just words that God has given me just to share. And you know, that, that that's something that I'm passionate about doing. So during this pandemic, it was reignited because I stopped my blog a little while 
Um, I haven't been, you know, keeping up with it or what's not, but you know, a friend encouraged me. They're like, do you still ride and what's not? So I, God used them in the pandemic to help reignite my passion for riding. And that's how I restarted my blog. And you know what they tell us? Sometimes God has to lock us down or shut, or we just have to shut the door on some stuff to allow God to work on us. You know, we just have to shut, shut out, tune out the noise. And if we don't do it, God knows how to do it for us. So what have we done with the time? I mean, we still have time. So if you haven't been doing anything, you know, you still got to, you know, some time to get something of substance and come through this pandemic with something in your hand. You know, crisis can be overwhelming. You know, it can be filled with much uncertainty. Where to go? You know, your back might be against the wall. But we must always remember who and where to turn to. Psalm 121 verses 1 to 2 says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord. Listen, we can only find hope in Jesus Christ. We can't find hope in the government, in, you know, sad to say, you know, sometimes our pastors, you know, sometimes our friends, sometimes our parents, we can only find that hope in Jesus. So we must always know where to turn to when our back is against the wall. Because listen, the people around us may not be able to help us like Jesus can. They, you know, people are bound to let us down. People are bound to fail us, but God will never let us down. And that is the person that we should run to anytime that we're in a crisis. First Chronicles chapter chapter 16 verses 11 talks about seeking God. It says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face continually. So seeking God is just not a one-time event. It is a daily commitment. We must be committed to his presence. We must be intentional in setting time aside for God. It is very easy to become consumed with life. Very, very easy. When we come from work, man, I'm so tired. When we come from school, man, I'm so tired. You know, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading the word. You know, it is so easy to be consumed with this life. But the presence of God is our safe haven. The presence of God is our refueling station. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 29 says, He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, He increaseth strength. Everything we need is found in His presence. Psalm chapter 16 verse 11 says, In His presence is fullness of joy, and at His right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So when we're feeling down, when we're feeling overwhelmed, listen, all we got to do is get in His presence, and we will find the very thing that we're lacking in our lives. There is a refreshing in His presence. There is a renewing in His presence. There is a reviving in His presence. So when we make time for His presence, it will make everything okay. Because we're just being so weighed down all the time. And that stuff is just, you know, just on our shoulders. And we're carrying that weight around. But God is just saying, just come into my presence. Make that time to be in my presence. Even with everything that Jesus did in ministry, he still made time to be in the presence of his father. There are many instances in the Bible where it says that Jesus, he went to a secret place. He secluded himself for a time, uh, that set time to be with the father. Psalm 63 verses 1 says, Early in the morning will I seek you, Lord. My soul thirsts for you. My soul longs for you. So what is our set time for God? It is very important. Is it early in the morning? Is it late at night? But we should always have that set time. I know for me, I'm not a morning person. So if God want to speak to me in the morning, you know, I'm, I'm like, please, Jesus, you know, catch me tonight. You know what I'm saying? But the evening time is definitely my time to, you know, be in the presence of God. So whatever your time is, whether it's in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, just make sure you have that time for God. And if you're just starting out, it could be five minutes. And gradually it will go to 10. Then gradually it will go to 15. But start somewhere saying, God, today I'm going to give you five minutes of my time. Listen, we'd be online way more than that. If we, um, for us our, our iPhone users, we could see on um, the screen time that we have. And it's quite a lot, especially during this pandemic. You know, we haven't been really out there. So we've been on our phone so long and so much. So what time have we setting for, are we setting for God? That is so so very important. We set time for other stuff. We make priority for other stuff. But why not have that same energy with the things of God, especially being in leadership? It's going to be hard. The, pre the pressure is going to be great. 
the weight of it is going to be great. So we have to make that time for God. Allow God to speak to you during that time. God, how to deal with this situation. And, and that's, the, that's the beautiful thing about it. It being in God's presence, you get everything. Like I said earlier, you get everything that you need. So God, how do I present this to my leaders? How do I present this idea to my leaders? Give me that creative, you know, ability to present these ideas to my leaders. How to handle this situation. How can I improve my organization that I'm over? That's what God, God, God is there for, the Holy Spirit. He's there to teach us. He's there to help us. Also, in times of crisis, it is so very important to, for us to guard our minds and thoughts. What are we feeding ourselves? Especially, you know, as leaders, what are we ingesting? What are we consuming on a daily basis? If all we are watching is bad news, then what else will be replaying in our minds? What else will be coming out of us? We will always find ourselves, you know, being salty Sharkisha, you know, or salty Sam, you know, always weighed down, always, you know, depressed, always sad, you know, always have something negative to say because that's what you're feeding yourselves. Isaiah chapter 26 verses 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed upon him, which is God. So we have to keep our minds on Jesus. We have to shift our focus off of the problems and on the promises of God. And not just complain about the problems, but become that God solution to that problem. You know, it's easy to say, you know, this thing is wrong. This thing is wrong. That thing is wrong. You know, this isn't working. But what are you doing to help resolve that issue? Become the solution. Become that positive, you know, fire. To, you know, to dispel all of that dark negativity. That is so very important.